For、um, number one, we're translating the following English sentences into symbolic sentences using our quantifiers, right? And I've just written、um, up here the definition for our universal quantifier,、uh, which is this upside down A, right? So for all x belonging to the universe, and the existential quantifier,、um, the backwards E, which says there exists x belonging to the universe.、Um, now the universe is important, right? Because it will Uh, it'll determine whether our statement is true. So, for example, if our、um, universe is a set of natural numbers, we can't say、uh, for all x, x is positive, right? But if our universe is a set of real numbers, that's not true. So, very important to keep that in mind.、Um, so, let's begin by writing these out. So, a we have not all precious stones are beautiful in the universe of all stones. So, if not all the, of them are beautiful, we can say that there exists a stone、um, that's precious and not beautiful, right? So, the it's like denying the universal. So, denying the universal is just saying there exists one such that、um, not beautiful, right? So, we're going to say that. So, for a, for a, we're saying that there,、um, there, oops. We're saying that there exists an X such that、um, X is precious and X is、uh, not beautiful. Yeah, that is our item A. Let's do item B. We're saying that all precious stones are not beautiful. So we're saying that for all elements in the universe,、uh, We do not have that property, right? So for B, we're saying for all elements in the universe,、um, if X is precious,、uh, then it is X is not beautiful, right? It's not beautiful. For C, we're saying some isosceles triangle is a right triangle. So we're saying in the universe of all triangles, right,、uh, there exists an isosceles such that、uh, there exists a triangle such that it is isosceles and it is a triangle. So we're、um, basically saying the existence of an element with the two properties. So for C, we're saying there exists an X belonging to the universe of triangles, right? Uh, such that x is isosceles, and x is, and x is a right triangle.、Um, for D, we're saying that no right triangle is isosceles. So we're looking at the entire、um, universe of triangles, and we're saying, hey, if it is. A right triangle, then it cannot be isosceles, right? So we're looking at all the items in the universe and saying if X is、uh, a right triangle, then、uh, then X then X is not isosceles.、Um, For let's see, for item E, we're saying all people are honest, or no one is honest. So be very careful here, because it would be tempting to say that for all people, either they are honest or they are not honest. But this doesn't guarantee that we'll both have honest people and dishonest people, right?、Um, sorry, that we'll have.、Uh, this won't guarantee that you know they'll all be honest or no one is honest. So what we're going to say.、Um, We are going to say here for E that for all x, so for all people, right? Either x is honest, or, or we're going to say, or there does not exist a person such that x is honest, right? We can't say that x is honest or x is dishonest. So either all of them are, or there does not exist a single x. Such that x is honest, and that way we can guarantee that either all of them are one way or all of them are another way.、Um, now let's do f. So f, we have some people are honest and some people are not honest from the set of people, right? 
So F, we are saying that uh, there exists some people such that X is honest. And we're saying, and there exists some other people, right? So I'm going to use a different variable. Um, because you can't be honest and not honest at the same time. And there exists a Y such that um, Y is not honest. So with this way, we're guaranteeing um, the existence that at least some people are honest and at least some other people are not honest, right? Um, we're guaranteeing that it's not the case that everyone is honest or everyone is dishonest. Um, now let's look at G. For G, every non-zero real number is positive or negative. So for G, we're just saying, hey, if your number is non-zero, right, for all of them, um, because of the word every, so every time you hear every, we're going to have to use the universal. So for all X, we're saying if X is non-zero, right, so if X does not equal to zero, then what this means is that either, let's see, either X is positive or X is negative. So either um, X is positive or X is negative. And let's close these parentheses. Um, so for H, we are saying, let's see, every integer greater than negative 4 or is greater than negative four or less than six. Now, we are not in the universe of integers, right? We're in the universe of real numbers. So we have to say if, you know, if it is an integer, then, you know, it is either greater than negative four or less than six. So we're going to use our universal, right? Because we're talking about every integer, but we're going to say if it's an integer, right? So if, if x, um, belongs to the set of integers, then, um, then we're going to say x is greater than negative 4 uh, or x is less than 6. Yes, and this works. Um, for i, let's see, for i, we have the Every integer is greater than some other integer. Now we're in the universe of integers, right? So we don't have to say that if it is an integer because we're already in that universe. So we're saying um, is greater than some, right? So we're saying for all x, uh, if every integer is greater than some, that means that there exists an integer, right? That's, that's less than x. So for all, all x, there exists a y such that... Um, x is greater than y. So we're saying for all integers, there exists another one such that um, it's less than than the previous integer we were talking about. Um, okay, let's do j now, which is no integer is greater than every other integer. So once more, we are in the universe of integers, right? So um, for j, we're going to say, um, maybe I'm going to put this here. For j, we're going to say um, no integer is greater than every other integer. So there does not exist an integer x uh, such that for all y, um, x is greater than y. So we're saying, hey, there doesn't exist an integer such that, you know, for all the other integers, x is the biggest one, right? So we're saying um, no integer is, is greater than every other. So that is our j. Um, our k is between any integer and any larger integer, there is a real number. And now we're in the set of real numbers. So, um, let's see. For k, we are saying um, between any. And the word any, we're talking about the universal. Because once more, it's uh, it talks about all of them, right? Any can be all. So, we're saying for all x and for all y... Um, if X and, and Y, if X and Y belong to the, um, to the integers, right? If X and Y are integers and let's say, and, um, between any integer and any larger integer, right? So we're going to say, and X is less than Y. So if this is true, and I'm just going to put a set of parentheses here, 
Um, then, then there exists a z. Now we don't have to say that it is an integer, right? Because for this one, um, there exists just a real numbers. Uh, there exists a z such that uh, it's between y and x, right? So x is less than z, which is less than y. And now we are going to just close our parentheses here and close one more parenthesis. Yeah. So to translate this, we're saying uh, for every for every two integers, right? Um, if x is less than y, then there exists a real number that's between x and y. Okay, that was our k. Let's do our l. So our l, we're saying that there, um, there is a smallest positive integer, right? So there is, it means that there exists an x such that for all, for all y, um, if if x and y belong, if x and y belong to the set of positive integers, so we say belongs to the set of positive, right? We add a plus here. So we're saying, hey, if x and y are both positive integers, right? Um, what are we saying? Then uh, there is the smallest, right? Then y is greater than x. Yeah. So for, for this one, we basically said, hey, there exists an integer, a positive integer, such that for all positive, uh, all the other positive integers, um, our x is smaller than the rest, right? Um, let's see what else we need. We have our m. No one loves everybody, right? So for our, uh, our m, we're going to have... No one means that there does not exist a single person, right? So there does not exist a person such that for every um, for everyone belonging to the set of people, X loves loves Y. Yeah. So basically, we're saying that there's not exist a person such that X loves every person, right? Um, okay. Our N now is everybody loves somebody, right? So we're saying, hey, for every person, there exists, uh, there exists another person, right? Such that X loves X loves Y. So we're saying, you know, for everyone, there, there exists a loved one, right? Um, and lastly, for our O, we're saying, um, for every positive real number x, there is a unique real number y such that 2 to the power of y is equal to x. So once more, for every, we're talking about the um, universal. And we're saying for, here we're saying for every x, right, if it is positive, so we're saying if x is greater than 0, then that means um, there exists... There exists a unique number, so we're using the unique existential, right, which is this um, exclamation here. There exists a unique y such that um, such that 2 to the power of y is equal to x. Yep. And that is it for our number one.